Hello and welcome to The Public Good. This is Deja James from Partnership for the Public Good or PPG, which unites over 365 community organizations seeking to build a better Buffalo. We're delighted to join you every Tuesday morning at 1030 a.m. on Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 a.m. You can also watch full video of every show on our YouTube page. Follow PPG Buffalo on Facebook and Instagram for more information on how to access video and the full podcast of our show. And of course, you can always get great information on our website, ppgbuffalo.org. I have done the spiel. I keep calling it that now. So I'm really excited to have Meg from Squeaky Wheel with us today. And you are going to talk about arts in general, but you also have a specific event this Friday at six o'clock at Albright Knox. So I want you to be able to plug that and also introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you so much, Deja, for having me. Yeah. Um, I'm Meg Spexcore. I'm uh, in communications with Squeaky Wheel. We are a film and media arts nonprofit located in the Tri-Main Center on Main Street. And um, I'm here uh, talking about Animation Fest, which is a free event at the Buffalo AKG, like Deja was saying, on uh, Friday, November 3rd at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, it's a, a 10 short animation, animated films, um, everything from hand-drawn animations to some generative AI stuff um, to kind of uh, cartoon style and to um, like felted stop motion puppets. Um, so it's, yeah, so it's kind of a big spread. Mixed media. Mixed media, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in there that I, I don't even know how they did it. So right. I'm just in, in awe. <laughs> um, and uh, it should be said too, I think that um, like it, it's open to anyone that wants to come, um, but uh, the, some of the material is kind of more um, mature adult okay. themed. Yeah. So I would say, you know, like preteen and up yeah. could um, could really enjoy it. Young kids, we're not, we're not going to turn anyone away saying they're too small or anything, but uh, they, they just might not enjoy it as much. Yeah, up to yeah. your up to the parents' discretion. Up to the parents' there. discretion. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. They're trying to understand jokes and things. So, yeah. what? Um, who's made these animated shorts? Uh, is it local artists? It's it's fine if it's not. But I'm just wondering, oh. like, who, you know, came up with this idea and who, um. Yeah, who made the art mm -hmm. that's going to be displayed on Friday? Yeah, well, so it's, um, the Animation Fest in particular has been running for 20 years. I saw um, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure who uh, like originated the idea 20 right. years ago. Yeah. Um, but in the past 20 years, we've taken local artists, we've taken um, artists, you know, from all over the country and from mm -hmm. all over the world. So this, oh, wow. yeah. So we have some from Buffalo and then um, some from you know Eastern Europe that are showing. Wow. And yeah. So it's kind of um, it's pretty pretty widespread, which is exciting. No. Oh, that's yeah. great too because I love local artist events I really do but I like mm -hmm. when people bring kind of that the other world to Buffalo because I think sometimes the Western New York community can get a little isolated mm -hmm. um, especially in terms of like stuff that we're exposed to in terms of media and everything like that mm -hmm. um, and I think some of that's for a reason because um, I think a lot of people feel like Western New York's a little bit neglected in like the world lexicon and how we talk about forgotten cities and things like that but um i think it's really exciting when people here are exposed to media that's maybe outside of something they're used to or their purview um it's a really great opportunity especially as you guys are making it accessible in this way free yeah. to community members how how important do you think that is to kind of like have these community spaces that are very accessible for the arts in general yeah oh i think it's so important um you know because art uh, even growing up i you know i loved to i loved to draw i loved to write and all of that yeah but art like as a you know capital a art always felt right. kind of like yeah. a, a thing that was in a gallery or on a pedestal or high yeah. in academia yeah and um and it's not it's really for anyone and everyone mm -hmm. um so to to make it something both that feels warm and welcoming socially but that also feels accessible economically mm -hmm. i think really takes it uh more out of this fear of feeling elite or feeling you know um or feeling uninviting to just the average day person absolutely yeah. i think just like you said art seems very highbrow it seems and part of that is because some of the arts world is that kind right. of elitist culture or whatever but yeah. i think people take for granted that art art wasn't always kind of guarded just by this right. elite like anybody can make art you know and so making it accessible in that way so that community one can attend and participate fully in that mm -hmm. and um i know you said it's not necessarily for young young kids but i don't know i mean i think 
when I was exposed to art as a preteen, it just changed my whole, like a museum became my favorite place, you know, oh, just from being, I still to this day, like I just was at the Albright Knox yesterday, actually. Like mm-hmm. I just took myself on a solo kind of self-care yeah. day <laughs> to like go to the museum because it's just something I really enjoy doing. That's um, but I was really, I was really taken by the the new structure and new building that they have, mm-hmm. um, because it seems like they they focus really hard on one that seems obviously like their contemporary art space and modern art space. So um, it had people from more recent times rather than like the kind of old yeah. the Van Goghs or even the dead white guys. Yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly the dead white guys. So it was and and as you said, it's not just the white guys. It was like there were Native American artists mm-hmm. in there. There were Cambodian artists in there. There were Black American artists and there were African artists in there, which, like, mm-hmm. there's a big difference between those two, just, like, even intra-community um, artists. And so I was just struck by how um, diverse it was. Yeah. And I was really excited to see that also because, yeah, you know, I mean, like, the regular Albright Knox was a little um, a certain way before. Um, but I, it was really nice to see that. And I, I felt myself reflected in the space right, and important. I think that that's really important too so um speaking of that and I talked a little bit why I like art and all mm-hmm. of those things but just wondering about your personal journey of like why did you choose to be kind of more in a creative yeah. space I mean both of us we could work at some corporation somewhere and get in whatever like you know right. but why why for you is that your life choice to kind of be more down like I want to work for an organization that's dedicated to mm-hmm. creativity or the arts or what kind of takes you down that path um I think um um so growing up uh, um arts the art world um you know drawing writing all of that those were the things that I was really passionate about and interested in school mm-hmm. um I think uh, I've never been diagnosed, but I think I pretty yeah. sure I have ADD. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, really hard for me to just sit in a lot of classrooms and focus. Yeah. Um, but doing things with my hands, doing creative things, um, I could kind of do that endlessly. Yeah. Um, so those were my passions. But then, you know, especially in Western New York, there's mm-hmm. not really a lot of uh, careers, you mm-hmm. know, that, that you're told that you can have as, as an artist, as a writer or mm-hmm. something like that. It mm-hmm. feels like a luxury. It feels impractical. Yeah. Um, graduated, I graduated in the recession, you know, yeah. um, went to a really small rural college, yeah. <laughs> which was interesting in so many ways, yeah. but, um, but it was kind of like this, you know, okay, I have a writing degree and now what do I do with it? Mm. And, and, uh, and there's even kind of a sense of like, uh, of guilt a little bit, like, you know, your parents sacrificed so much for you to go to school. Yep. And then you're like, okay, well, you know, am I kind of tossing that aside, getting a, a degree that I'm not going to be able to use? Yeah. Um, and uh, but I, but I came out with a writing degree and didn't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. So I just worked a bunch of uh, minimum wage, you know, food service and mm-hmm. customer service and other jobs mm-hmm. um, trying to pay off student debt. Mm-hmm. And um, I got into um, river rafting, whitewater rafting. Oh, yeah, that's really fun. It's really fun. I've so, done it twice in my oh, life, yeah. but it's really fun. Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. Uh, so I've been a guide for 10 years now. I started in Letcher State it's Park. So cool. Yeah. I did it at Letcher, oh, actually. I might have been your guide. How long you ago? You might have. Yeah. Um, it, I think I was in eighth grade. But okay, no, I wasn't here. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah, but that's very cool. That's very yeah, cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, which, which sounds unrelated, but it really is um, because you're, you're working with people. Um, you're experiencing things in a really hands-on, connected way. Yeah. Um, but, but also, um, I think I was processing a lot of things um, about my life and my family and things that were happening mm-hmm. through being on the water. Um, yeah. And later on realize that that's, oh, that's, you know, metaphor and that's creative thinking. And, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, and then this, this, all co- I promise this will come back to the no, I question. No, yeah. I think it's, I'm already seeing the thread, but <laughs> Thank you. sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, um, and, and then, um, so I, I'm from Rochester originally and then lived down in Allegheny County for six years mm-hmm. and then moved to Buffalo as a young adult mm-hmm. and, um, and got involved in the poetry scene here. So, yeah, which yeah. is major. Which is major. I didn't know. It's awesome. I've just gone to, yeah, I've yeah. gone to a couple of, like, Buffalo Wordism and some other stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah Wordism is great. Yeah. Um, I started in Pure Ink. So, okay. Yeah. We were just talking about them earlier. Yeah. We're probably going to have them commission a poem for us. Oh, you, yeah, you should. They're great. They're yeah. lovely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, especially uh, Marquise Burton really took me under his, 10,000 really took me under his wing mm-hmm. into the poetry scene mm-hmm. here in Buffalo mm-hmm. and, um, and and got me acclimated and, and, um, and, and really, like, 
believing in the power of of words and, yeah. and, and like specifically speaking those words out loud in front of community yeah you know? mm-hmm. um so that was really important to me um and then uh when i moved out out west for six years to new mexico um i wasn't specifically working in the arts but found a way to make whatever i was doing creative because that's just you know when you're an artistic person when you're a creative person yeah. it comes out however you can yep um so i was actually working for five of those years um in therapeutic adventure which is where the river rafting comes in okay so i was um designing and leading um outdoor therapeutic adventure programs mainly for adults in recovery um but also for youth in prisons and yeah. for youth in shelters yeah. and um and uh folks in um you know domestic violence shelters and things like that yeah and um a lot of what we're doing is taking people outside and coming up with activities um that would help them you know either creatively process things or um, be able to find new connections mm-hmm. to the people around them and the space around them and to mm-hmm. themselves mm-hmm. Um, uh, or even just, you know, play for a day outside. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, I made up a lot of games. Yeah. Um, I tried to bring in the arts. So yeah. there was like a whole, uh, I did a whole, you know, unit with them just making puppets and cranky boxes yeah. and, uh, and writing stories. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So, so bringing in a lot of, um, art and writing into, is like a tangential thing into a field that's already create a field and yeah. then having that kind of take a, a you know, a friend center, uh, role into yeah. what they were already doing. Yeah. Um, and then just came back to Buffalo uh, like two months ago. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really? Rec- well, welcome back. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, working at Squeaky has, has been great too. It's been a different side of, um, of the arts world in a way because it is specifically an arts organization. Yep. Um, but, uh, but, but that's been interesting too, to, yeah. to, to be able to be in an organization that, um, that specifically already is doing that work. Yeah. yeah. No. And I think that I have so many threads based on what you said. One, I think it's so interesting that you kind of went back to childhood when I asked you, like, how do you go, how do you go down this vein? Because I really <laughs> think that, as you said, I, I also probably have ADD or ADHD, but <laughs> when I was younger, it was the same for me. Like yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't focus in the way that people said you should focus. Like focusing meant you were like attention ahead to the chalkboard. You were writing down notes. You were just on it, like type A, have everything organized. No, focus on this thing. I can never focus on one thing at a time. (laughs) I can barely talk about one thing at a time, which is why I'm going to struggle through this response to everything (laughs) you said. But it's it starts there, right? Mm -hmm. Like with that like fidgety kid or Mm -hmm. that kid that seems like they're dreaming all the time or Mm -hmm. that kid that seems like they're stuck in their head or in their imagination Mm -hmm. or maybe they play with toys longer than people think that they should play with toys because I think the other thing you said was so interesting too about bringing arts into therapy Mm -hmm. and a lot of the times like you know that resurgence that happened of like adult coloring or whatever and I was kind of like why did we stop coloring you know what I'm saying like I I feel like sometimes some of the things that are so obvious that we clearly did as kids as mm-hmm. kind of like our own coping like life mechanisms yeah. that we're told like that's for kids and you're done with it now mm-hmm. right and also i think some of the imaginative nature of kids there's so many movies about like if you don't believe anymore like peter pan disappears right. or like yeah. all these different things and i feel bad that like as we become adults it's seen that adulthood is like almost you have to separate yourself from creativity and imagination mm-hmm. in a way. Or, or if you do use it, it's for like business, which right. I have other things to say about that. You profit off of it. Exactly. Yeah. Like the commodification, capitalization of for arts sure. or whatever. But which is still cool. If you mm-hmm. like are the graphic designer that's making a, some a bag, fine. That's fine. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> you, I think you can use it for other reasons. Like exactly sure. what you're saying for like that early late twenties self-discovery thing that happens that kind of whirlwinds you around or whatever, or any age, whatever, midlife crisis, whatever. Mm -hmm. No, there's no age moniker on that. I'm sure. Um, but I just, I just like the pattern of thought you went through. Um, cause to me, it's that same trajectory of like, um, I don't think I'm creative in the sense that, that I draw or write specifically or anything like that for me. Like, I think arts is like music for me. I like to DJ, I DJ on the side. That's fine. But I just, I think everybody kind of needs to find their 
their thing mm-hmm. and creativity is seen in so many different ways and avenues yeah. um that i think aren't encouraged necessarily especially in teen adulthood right time period unless you're like some type of musical prodigy or right whatever like somebody sees some type of success story in yeah. you or something like that yeah um but it should be encouraged otherwise. even if it's not like your career path it should be exactly. encouraged otherwise you know what i mean i don't know why yeah. when we're adults it kind of gets stamped down like, yeah i don't I know, know why so that true. happens you're totally right i mean if you like if you go into a classroom and you ask a group of like fourth graders like okay how many of you are creative they all raise their hands right? yeah and then you you ask a group of adults and, yeah and they're all like afraid to raise their hand like they're going to be you know judged to a certain standard uh, if they're not good enough at their art right or they, you know, they don't have enough credentials or yeah or they don't make money off of their of whatever they do that's creative yeah. you know there's yeah. a sense of self-doubt there because i think um you know it's for a variety of reasons right um a lot of partly because a lot of the art that we see in the world is only the art that we can see like as profitable art right or, or, as, or know, prestigious art or, or yeah, yeah totally like moma true. type of situation yeah, the lure yeah. for whatever yeah yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Like, big city art <laughs> yeah or, you know um so it's uh so i think in that way it's intimidating as an uh, as an adult to to feel like um you know there's so many other things trying to take precedent in your life and you know to i've met so many adults that say that they have this uh passion you know on the back burner like oh someday i would love to write a book or like mm-hmm. oh you know i'd love to pick up guitar and learn mm-hmm. but like you know there's so much happening and mm-hmm. and um and that is uh that is creative right yeah. Th- those are creative energies that we have inside of us that yeah. at some point has fallen on the wayside and, and that might just be because it wasn't encouraged that might be because you know uh, you know like we had very serious uh life events and yeah. um and you know practicalities that had to take precedent for various reasons right no they they yeah. really do i mean yeah. like literally life happens and that's right. understandable and you get other responsibilities you get less time allocation yeah. all of those things i mean that's part of the struggle of adulthood too right um but yeah i mean i just think that people should be more encouraged to mm-hmm. have these free imaginative kind of more loose open-ended type of moments and questions and things that they do in their life yeah. without judgment you know oh, what totally. i mean yeah. um as society so i think that's cool the other thing i wanted to say is um you mentioned kind of being in buffalo and exposed to the poetry scene mm-hmm. and kind of that awakening for you i think like being born and raised here specifically for me mm-hmm. I didn't discover how creative and artsy Buffalo is. Actually, I knew it on the surface, I guess. If you grew up here, you can't help but be exposed to, like, there's all these arts events all the time. What the heck is this about, right? But, like, there's even more than just the surface arts events that you see, like, about painting or even, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And I got exposed to that now, kind of in my 20s, and discovering, like, oh, there's, like, a whole really supportive community here which is a really like well-kept secret i don't know what you think about that but yeah it's really cool yeah um yeah i i feel like that's uh that's one of the things i love most about um western new york but buffalo in particular it's just like the there's so much there's so much arts out there there's so many creative people there's so many people um just making things because they can't not make things right yeah yeah um and uh and it's it's scrappy and it's collective feeling and mm-hmm. it's community feeling mm-hmm. um you know like there six years ago when i was living in, in buffalo um before moving uh there was i could go to a different poetry event like five times a week if i wanted to right just right cause, and, and no one was making money off of it it was just people that like they're like i write things because i have to write things that's it so let's get in a group and you know share with each other what we wrote that's it yeah and then when moving out to new mexico um new mexico was great in a different way but um i had you know i had heard that santa fe was this like you know writing and arts hub and i'd moved there for different reasons mm-hmm. but i was so excited to be like oh okay where do i fit in this writing community yeah and i got there and it, there was really nothing for me to latch on to it was mm. all like you know this uh, fancy galleries it's and, kind of exclusive already yeah. you know it was already yeah everybody was, had their spot exactly yeah there was a lot of older retired folks that were pretty wealthy and writing their memoirs and they would have these retreats where you could pay to go to also write a memoir oh. and and i was like but where's the you know like the 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 poets that are just doing poetry on the sidewalk at infringement festival kind of thing. You know right. I mean? Right. And, um, and there wasn't that, which was mm. uh, or at least that I found. So, uh, Buffalo just has this like 
this this creative energy that's kind of bursting out in the pockets all over um, it is yeah. and you can be like at any level yes. i think like yeah. you you do find the person that's been doing it for 30 years or whatever mm -hmm. and you're like oh wow like or you do like you're the beginner the novice that's kind of coming in and exactly. you're welcomed like with open arms like yeah like participate in this let's see yeah. where it goes um i found that there's just so many different pockets of community you mm -hmm. just find your kind of niche and then you can kind of like skyrocket off from that it's really yeah it's fun it's just very fun and i also recently like i've just discovered there's a lot of youth led mm -hmm. initiatives happening um there are some that have been like main states like buffalo wordism has been here for a really long time yeah. or different things like that um but the biggest thing I've seen a surgeons in lately is like fashion. Um, part of that is due to like Buff State's fashion school mm -hmm. um, and shout out to them. They do a really great job. Um, but they just recently like a group of young people had like a Buffalo Fashion Week for the first time at like one of the um, banquet centers down on the waterfront, which was really cool to see. I mean, like, I don't so think cool. anybody there was like over 27. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. it was just great. I just was so I'm so encouraged by that. Yeah. Um, or even podcasting or all these different podcast hubs that are coming up and mm -hmm. um shout out to sneak vibin they have like this hip-hop blog chandra chandra um has a hip-hop blog that she runs um so like music like textile material clothes poetry like all of it okay. all have their own kind of niche little crowd yeah. that you know they've built community around each other right. and they support each other and really just like G grassroots kind of guerrilla art mm -hmm. type of initiatives like we're gonna pull together a fashion show just because we want to yep. and it's not an established like buffalo fashion week sounds really oh it's haughty it probably already is this established thing yeah yeah but no it's like some young kids are like no we're gonna make the thing mm -hmm. and we're gonna decide who can and cannot whatever and probably don't have a cannot but who can participate in mm -hmm. it um and so i think a long-winded answer to say I really think that um, the creative community in Buffalo is really inspiring in that way. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just authentic in a way that I think people do uh, like at a certain time period would say, oh, like that's why I wanted to go to New York or right. that's why your experience is saying you wanted to go to Santa Fe for that. Like some of that authentically is happening right now here versus I think some of some people could say New York City's it's like too exclusive everybody's going there it's really hard to break through mm -hmm. or find a community mm -hmm. whereas here you know it's like more of this organic connection where you can kind of feel like you fit in right away type of yeah. situation um and i on saying that too i think events like yours there's a lot of events that are openers that can mm -hmm. be like previews to people to the art scene that aren't like yeah. you have to be of this certain status to even get to this event mm -hmm. but it's the whole point is we're making this accessible in a way yeah. where you can have no experience whatsoever but we just want you to come maybe even have your first experience yeah. with art so i'm really excited for this animation festival i don't know if there's any specific shorts i know you mentioned um there were like people from everywhere, local, mm -hmm. Eastern Europe, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a certain theme for them or if they're all kind of really different. Um, there's not a specific theme. Yeah. Um, we when we um, send out calls for applications and submissions, um, you know, we didn't really give many guidelines or or mm -hmm. or you know, semantic uh, tones or anything like that. Yeah. Um, we did kind of when we were going through the submissions. Um, you know, we started by kind of taking a couple of our favorites and saying like, okay, what's the connecting thread here? You yeah. know, is it like a style? Is it a tone? Is it like a feeling you get when you watch it? Yeah. And then building from there to say like, okay, how do we round this out? Like, do we have too many things that are somber and we need something like really, you know, flashy and uplifting and, yeah. um, or saying like, okay, do we have, you know, um, this, this piece is about, you know, uh, family dynamics yeah. and, and do we have something else that kind of speaks to that too? Right. So, um, yeah, we're just trying to balance it a little bit. Yeah. It. Yeah. We, we have this, uh, unofficial theme for a couple of the videos where there's trees involved and that's okay. Yeah. For some reason that was just like, there was a lot of films Common. with trees in it. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, here we go. Um, but it wasn't specifically that we were looking for something like that. And, and we're also not specifically looking to say any one particular thing, you know, yeah. we weren't like, we weren't like, okay, this is our mission statement of the festival. Right. So now right. We're going to find films align with that right we are just kind of like you know um partly like what is it do we think um people you know want or need to see at the moment what is it that like 
we were surprised by watching. Yeah. So I'm not a media arts person, so I can't look at something and know how it was made. Right. But a lot of the folks at Squeaky are. Yeah. So I think they, um, you know, after seeing, you know, so many different films and submissions for, you know, 20 years, there are some that they looked at and they were like, I've never seen this done in this specific way. And there are some that they looked at and they were like, I don't even know how they did this. Yeah. So I think that was really alluring for them. Um, yeah. No, that's cool. I think, I think it's better to be open-ended because then you yeah. kind of don't know what you're going to get. And then it just exposes you to even more like, oh, well, I didn't expect this. And yeah. somehow, yeah, you have a tree type of little <laughs> well, allegorical because. trope going on. <laughs> Who knows what <laughs> Who that's. Knows like. We just actually had a whole show on trees we were, <laughs> um, the other week. Yeah. Um, but we were talking actually about um, how there aren't a lot of trees in certain parts of the city, but there are mm. trees in other parts of the city and how important oh, yeah. trees are for community, Very important. Um, urban planning, kind of some of those other things too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think tree, trees are like one of the biggest kind of metaphor allegories that are used in a bunch of yeah. different things, but um, they really are central to community in a certain type of way. So mm-hmm. I'm glad that you guys have trees so trees involved yeah like great trees. yeah we love yeah. that <laughs> so um that's awesome if you could just plug again where it's gonna be mm-hmm. what time mm-hmm. so people can kind of come out reiterate like it is free for everyone right yeah. of yeah. course yep free event um probably uh you know hour long hour and a half tops um yeah. it's friday november 3rd six o'clock p.m at mm-hmm. the buffalo akg art museum mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, for, for any ages, but, um, preferably preteen and up at the mm-hmm. parents' discretion. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Meg, for being here. Thank the you, show Deja. is already over. I can't believe it. It went I so fast. I had a great conversation great with you. Talking. So really excited. Yeah. Um, thank you once again. Thank you to Squeaky Wheel. This is Deja James with Partnership for the Public Good or PPG, uniting over 365 organizations working to build a better Buffalo. It's the Public Good Tuesdays at 1030 a.m. on Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 a.m.